Look at that. Perfect accessory for a perfect race car. We got an inside net, sometimes known as a driver's net. We're gonna run this across here to see about where we can fit it up. So let's get started on that. All right, so I'm gonna start by trying to figure out where I'm gonna mount everything up here. And, uh, we'll get to placement and how we decide all that in a moment. But uh, definitely need to go over the top portion of the main hoop here. Get that wrapped around and kind of kind of just loosely set in place, you know. Just for the purposes of uh, mocking everything up here, we'll figure out everything in just a moment. And uh, now we got to find a spot for the front of it to reach. And uh, you know, it, there's there's not a whole lot of space here, or not really anything you can technically mount it to, but behind the dash there is. So. Uh, according to the rule book for the uh, class that this car is racing in, uh, everything on the dash needs to be you know, kept in place, all the panels, everything else like that, unless you uh, uh, need to modify them to facilitate the installation of certain components. So um, actually I'm looking at the dash clock here and uh, that seems to be the perfect place to actually run this net or the front mounting portion of it. Because right behind the dash there is a dash bar, it's a factory dash bar and I think that'll be a great tie in point for for the front of this net. So I'm going to get that clock out of there real quick. I have to kind of delicately pull this apart here. Unplug that. Okay. Just a few screws here on the back side. Get these out of the way. pop that panel back on there. All right, so the front of this, got a couple of straps, and this is gonna be pretty difficult to get in there, but I'm gonna feed it through and try very hard not to, uh, not to let it smash any of the components inside of there. And it's a very, very tight fit. Hopefully I can reach everything. Let's see, there's, there's part of it. Now this is going to have to be tied, you know, and cinched out a little bit better once it gets behind there. But I do have the uh, the restrainer, the band, the clip here. I have this in the right spot for it to for the belt or the buckle itself to stick out through the dash clock. So I'm just going to use what limited access I have here and try to tighten this up the best I can. at least get it started and then I'll run it back up in there and cinch it down. It would absolutely help out tremendously if you knew somebody with small hands. Get them to pull it in for you. There we go. And we are strapped in. So I'm just going to leave the slack just kind of sitting behind here. Should be okay there. We're tied on tightly to the uh, to the dash bar. So let's put our panel back on. Voila. Alright, specifically in the rule book, it states that the lower section of the net should pass horizontally about the level of the driver's shoulders. So, our driver actually fits beautifully with the seat, and uh, his shoulders are right about where the shoulder bolsters are supposed to go, so we can run that directly across. Now, if you notice over here, there's absolutely nothing for us to tie on to, so this uh, is quite a lot of excess on here, so I'm actually going to tie into the rear strut bar that we fabricated earlier. So we're just going to loop this around and make sure that the straps don't twist. That's not allowed. Send this loop through, back up through the buckle. I'm going to cinch that down pretty tight. I want it nice and tight and we're going to pull it a little bit closer toward the driver. 
I gotta do it. We'll just pay out a little bit of slack here so we can get this second portion through. And you're basically routing it back through to cinch it down tightly. This is the same with uh, with harnesses as well. So we'll get that as tightly fit as possible. You want to pull up on the loop as it's already been fed through. Get that as tight as you can. Grab hold also as tight as you can and as quickly as you can give it a good tug. Now it's in. The center strap is actually a breeze and feed this around, kind of get it adjusted correctly. Hold tightly. Yeah, that looks about right. So again, making sure that the straps are not twisted. Feed it through. Give ourselves some slack here just to be able to pay this through. All right. Now again, we'll pull the loop snug. After that, it's just a smart tug. Get it nice and snug. There's our center section. So this can be, you know, obviously it moves a little bit. We're actually going to put a, a little belt stay or a strap stay on there so it doesn't move and around. So that's actually listed in the SCCA portion of the book. So now we'll move on to the top one, which we had loosely fitted before. Make our adjustment here. That's a little bit too much. Back it off a little bit. And that should be a good wrap around there. So again, I want to kind of pull it tight here and make sure that everything lines up where it's supposed to and correctly. So again, one more time, making sure that it doesn't twist. Start feeding it through the buckle. No twist. A little bit of slack. Need just a little bit more slack on there. There we go. Now we can feed it back. Perfect. So, slack back on it. Nice and snug. Bingo. So now we just got to get it aligned real quick. We're just going to work on the alignment here a little bit. And we're going to have to put some, uh, some strap stays or belt stays in there to make sure that it doesn't move. Now you notice if you move it, it kind of loosens up and it gets a little sloppy. So the idea is to keep the belts in place in the correct position in which we installed it for that nice tight, tight fit. So I'm going to go uh, bend up some 5 16 rod and we're going to bend it just enough to get and hold the strap in place and we'll just tack those in there, pull the net back out, fully weld it, job is done. Bending up some belt stays is actually very easy to do. Just take some 5 16 rod, round stock, bar stock, whatever you want to call it. Stick it in the vise. There's one half. We'll leave just about a finger gap at the bottom there. Now, there's nothing like really specific about this. It says you have to have it a certain way, but 
Yeah, that looks good. Works well enough. Cut that off even and we got a belt stay. These don't require a whole lot to get to stay. We're just going to toss a couple of tacks in real quick and make sure we maintain the uh, alignment of the net. Couple of good tacks will hold it. Decisions, decisions. Should I have it on the back side? Should I have it on top? Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Maybe I'll put it on the back. That should look okay. This last one ought to be easy. Spill that. Oh, right about there, sure. Why not? So I'm just gonna take the net down real quick so I don't set everything on fire while I weld it. We'll just do the opposite of install to uninstall. And you want to you want to attempt to not move your buckle. So make sure that you actually pull the strap out itself without moving the buckle. This will make it a lot easier to reinstall later. this uh, while I'm waiting on everything to cool down here and I'm like you know what I can make this look a little bit nicer than just a, a hole in the trim panel so what I did uh, I gutted the clock and uh, I'm gonna stick that back in there and that ought to look uh, a lot better on the reveal and that could look pretty clean so these clocks aren't anything uh, particularly fancy or whatever they don't they don't really read in Japanese or anything so I'm gonna put these screws back in. If he ever wants a replacement clock, I kept the guts. All right, let's stick this back in here. Oh. Ooh, that looks a lot nicer, and that doesn't uh, that doesn't fall back in too easily either. So, yeah, good decision. I like that one. So, everything should be pretty cool now. We'll. Uh, put the side net back up in there and then uh, hook it all up get the final adjustments this one's done pretty textbook <laughs>